Time for your pills, Woody. shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judges in the earth. Psalm 58, Peter's favorite. Let them melt away as waters. We begin as dust, and we end as dust. Please join me now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he rest in peace. Amen. We are here to bid farewell to Peter, a man about whom many things could be said. To get a glimpse of a man's character, one need only look at the company he keeps. Uh, how disgusting. How could you? Spitting on a dead man's coffin. What gives you the right? Peter's last wish. Some chewing tobacco. Delivered on top of the box, like baseball players do on television. Oh, you mean like this? <laughs> oh, funerals bring out the best in us, don't they? Hi. I'm Olive McFarlane. And these fine relics here are Woody Laramie and... Joseph Blaharczyk. Come, Carolyn, we're leaving. Now, who the hell are you talking to me like that? Joseph is having us for tea. Join us? He's not always a grouch. <laughs> Come on, it'll be festive. Father, join us, if you can. Come on. Woody, you and I have some unfinished business here. We do? Yes, we do. The receipts. Anybody home? For the funeral. Just tell the people at your home to write me a check. If I left it up to them, Peter would have been dumped in some old shoebox. Gramps! Hey, everybody! What's this? What the hell happened to you? It's for my play. Romeo and Juliet? The s &M version. Rose, this is so... Uh... Joseph's grandson, Max. Rose Lear, always nice to meet a fellow actor. Nice to meet you. Actor? Try bum. When is he going to get a real job? That's what I want to know. Woody, nice to meet you. Bye, Alf. Thanks. And don't forget that money you owe me, Romeo. Yes, well, what a lovely home. We need a fourth for bridge. Yeah. Are you interested? I'll have to think about it. Fine, no problem. We'll get someone else. I've thought about it. I'd love to thank you. Oh, right. We'll call you tomorrow, OK? Oh, great. <laughs> By the way, Rose, didn't I see you somewhere before? Yes, it's true. Even I get hemorrhoids. <laughs> Hey, that old TV commercial, right? <laughs> that stuff doesn't work. With you, I'm not surprised. Try prunes. Attention. This meeting of the Sunshine Manor Facilities Committee is now in session. Order, order, please. Order, order, please. You're the head of the committee. You should know when the will pool will be installed. We're looking into it. That was six months ago, wasn't it? Well, not quite that. Those plans for that new wing were approved over a year ago. Just what is going on? The committee has sat down on a number of occasions with the administration, but it does take time. It's all talk and no action. Just like the men around here. <laughs> Let's just get that new wing built, huh? I'm in a room for two that has four people in it. And, and three of them snore. I do not 
Oh, yes, you do. How in the hell will you do? <laughs> what? What? Listen, um, I have a nice carpet that I would like to sell. If anyone's interested, I'll be in my room from 8 o'clock on, and it's a lovely carpet. It has a beautiful... That is not on the agenda. It's on the agenda. Your father, he would, he, would, he would not hold off on these improvements. He loved this place. Yes, he did, didn't he? But he's gone. And you don't look after the books around here anymore. I do. Carpe diem, would he seize the day? What's this? Receipts. Peter's funeral. Oh? Yes. Joseph Blahacek wants to be reimbursed from Peter's estate. We would have taken care of Peter's burial ourselves. So you go tell Mr. Blahacek that unfortunately there is no money to reimburse him. What? You heard me. Oh, no. You... You... You didn't... Didn't what? What? What are you trying to say, Woody? If, if your father... Was... If my father were still here, this place would still be in the red. And as far as Peter goes, the pennies he didn't drink away, he kindly donated to Sunshine Manor. And all of us are very grateful. Here, I'm sure it was a lovely funeral. I have work to do. Go. Well, I was born on the Quebec US border. In our house, the, the kitchen was in Vermont, and uh, the bathroom was in Quebec. <laughs> and when I die, I want my ashes spread right at that border point on my birthday. Eight American food and pissed in French. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he's so screwed up. I was born and raised in Hoboken, New Jersey, home of little old Blue Eyes himself. I ran away when I was 20. Came up here to marry Fred. Mother never quite forgave you. <laughs> Something like that. So, where's Fred? I left him on my 60th birthday, and I became a professional actress. Just like that. Women. Problem with the female gender. And no wife. No, no. Don't say that. Why not? Because it's my house. I don't want to talk about it. Is he always like this? Oh, yes. Most of the time. The rest is mine. Jose. Rose? Maybe we should change partners. Oh, come on. It's a penny a point. Peter was right. You are an old miser. Joseph, block a check. Speaking of Peter, did you get a check for me? There's nothing. Peter had no money left, okay? The little he had, he donated to the home. He donated the money to the home. I paid 4,000 bucks for that coffin. And he donates the money to those cheap bastards. He was probably drunk at that time. I'm not surprised. Well, maybe we could share the cost. I could put in a thousand. I could come up with five hundred. Woody? Oh, I will, I'll ask. What do you have to ask? The home. The home? They, they take care of me. I get like a, an allowance. Allowance? Woody? 
What's going on? When I had my nervous breakdown, I, I signed power of attorney. Well, you just go in there and tell them you're feeling fine. And whatever you sign, you rip it up. It's your money. I'll see. Oh, I'm surprised at you. I don't know you like this. You sound like a, like a wimp. Boneless, spineless little wimp. Joseph Blachacek, how can you speak with such disrespect? Who the hell do you think you are? Nobody talks to me like this in my house. I just did. What are you going to do about it? I pass. It's past your bedtime, isn't it? Well, mother's work is never done. What can I do for you? I want a thousand dollars. Really? And what would that be for? It's, it's my money. Well, look into it. It's a significant sum. But it's, it's mine. I'm well aware that it's yours. But I'm looking out for your best interest. Your investments have not performed well. Wouldn't be a good time to sell. You'd lose a lot. Well, maybe uh, I, I, maybe I should. Maybe you should what? Revoke my power of attorney. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I didn't think so. It's funny, isn't it? The way the past comes back to haunt us. Good night, Woody. Stand by, Olive, in three, two, one. Welcome to a special nighttime edition of Old and Wise. Olive McFarland here, my guest, the handsome devil, Jerry Corcoran, financial advisor extraordinaire, and a most eligible bachelor. Tonight, how to use your computers, how to do your taxes on it, all part of our theme, taking charge of your life. So pick up your phone, get ready. The number's at the bottom of the screen, 555-5552. Five, 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 Stand two. by on camera, too. 555-5552. Five, 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 if it's busy, call again. If it's not, get rid of your gum, clear your throat, because that means you're on the air. All right. Waiting for our first call. Let's chat a little bit about computers, software. Okay. Computers. Uh, well, That's why the world is such a mess. <laughs> well, that's where the money is, computers. You know, that's our future, Grandpa. What the hell do you know? You are in some MS play that pays 75 measly bucks a week, some future. It's a start, and it's S and M. They should at least pay you some extra money for for all those nipper rings. Hmm? And don't forget, I lend you some money. I expect you pay me back. All right, look, Gramps, I'm auditioning for a beer commercial tomorrow. All right, they pay good money, those commercials. Don't count your chickens before they crack. Before they hatch. Sounds like my show. Advise, walk you through. All right. All right, well, let's um, take our first call. Hello, we have somebody who's shy here, doesn't want to give her a name, so we'll call her Jane <coughs> Hello, you're on the air. Olive? Hello. I I'd like to ask you a question, please. Surely. Go ahead. Well, see, uh, my investments, uh, I, I think I've been losing money in the stock market. <coughs> <coughs> Am I better off in bonds? Jerry? Well, <coughs> if uh, you haven't made money in the stock market in the last five years, you should... Uh, Change brokers. Oh, oh dear. I, I, I think I made a mistake. You see, I, I signed over. 
Signed over? <coughs> what, what? What did you sign over? Heavens, I... <coughs> I... No, no, I... You tell us a little I'm bit sorry. more. We can... And take care of that cough. Next caller, long distance. Jim, you're on the air. Hey, bud. Hey, Olive. Hi, Kate. Move over. Coming through. Today it's going to be the men against the women. No way. You insisted on teaming up with Rose. <laughs> well, that's how it was in England during the war. Peter and I. <laughs> we made a bundle. Those English nurses, they were petrified of us. I bet those nurses found you so charming. <laughs> I'm sure Evelyn did. Evelyn? Who's Evelyn? His wife. For three days. Five days. You had a wife for five days. I'm surprised it lasted that long. I got her pregnant. <laughs> After that, she thought I was dead. Pass. Two, no trial. Well, he gets sent behind enemy lines, see? Underground, because he was speaking Czech, you see? Pass. Three, no Trump. Damn it. I pass. 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 And then Evelyn comes here with her baby to escape the bombs. You're the dummy. Oh, End of story. Then what? And Evelyn, thinking that he's dead, needs a father for their little Vera. So she annuls, marries Harry, an Anglican. End of story. Hey, people. Oh, Max. Hey, Max. Well, did you get that beer commercial job? Grandpa, the chickens didn't crack, okay? But, but, I have opening night tickets to my play for all of you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Max! Oh, Max, what thank you. That's very sweet. Oh, very good. Great. I'm not going to any sadomasochistic play until you explain how are you going to pay back my loan. You know, Graham said just... <laughs> Why do you pick on the kid all the time? He's your grandson. He's a good boy, and all you ever talk about them is about money, all money, all the time. What do you want to talk about money? How about my money? You know, Rose and Olive already pay their shares. No. I. I'll what? Power. Woody, did you at least try to talk to them? But they... they won't. They won't what? But the, the money is locked in, uh, in long-term bonds. Long-term bonds. When do they mature? Fifteen years. Fifteen years? In fifteen years? years, you'll be dead. Well, now tell me, where are those bonds kept? 
Are they government? Are they corporate? Woody, you just go there and ask some questions and get some answers and stop acting like a wimp. Wimp, wimp, wimp. Headless wimp. Joseph, back off. <laughs> That's right, Jim. Sell all 2,000 shares. That's what I said. Uh-huh. Hang on, I'll call, you. I'll call you back. I want my money. All of it. Woody, we've been through this already. Cut the crap. These papers here... Look, don't, hey, don't come in this office and start waving papers at me. I want my money. How, how much do I have? This is Sunshine Manor. You are well taken care of. This is your home. How much, damn it? Tell me or I, I, I you, will... You what? You'll tell somebody? I don't think so. Pieces of paper don't lie, do they, Woody? Huh? Do they? Bookkeepers do. People do. And sometimes they steal, don't they? How much was it, Woody? Hmm? Oh, yes. $75,000. You son of a bitch. You very well know that your father and oh, I... My father! Never remembered my birthday, ever. But boy, he sure knew when, when Mrs. Arnold was turning 90 or, or what kind of cake to buy smelly Mrs. Sims. My father. Don't talk to me about my father. You and my father, you and my father stole $75,000 from some old man in 1982. And for that, I thank you because you set up the system. You were a good teacher, Woody. You want to know how much money you have? Here, I'll show you. Woody Laramie. Well, look at here. Essentially, Woody, you have nothing. You have $372. Do you think that I want to spend the rest of my life Cleaning up after you people until I'm old and wrinkled like you. No, I don't. I deserve better. Now, I'm going to get out of here. And if you breathe a word of this to anyone, I promise you, I promise you, you will spend the rest of your miserable life in jail. You got that? Well, it was a car accident. My legs are paralyzed, but not the rest of me. <laughs> See those guys? That's why my husband gave me the boot. I'm a lesbian. So now I'm out of the closet and out of the house. Nice guy. Huh? Where the hell is he? And your children? Oh, they were in college by then. Well, he made them choose, you know. Him and his money. Or you. Yeah, right. Well, I don't blame him, really. In the last year, they've come around a few times. Sweet. Trying to understand Mom. They're not my life, though. No, it can't be. No, it kill me. I'm not waiting one more minute for that wimp. Let's go get our seats. But soft. 
What light through yonder window breaks? Romeo! It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Romeo! Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon! already sick and pale with grief. Romeo. That thou... Uh, that thou... That thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. What? That thou, her maid, That thou, some maid, is pretty fair. But be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and black, and none but fools do wear it. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Bondage is hoarse and cannot speak aloud. <laughs> We trusted the text. The text. Shakespeare. The writer. You knew him. Wow, like how old are you? Excuse me, Rose. <laughs> well, age is only important if you're cheap. What the hell are you talking about? No, I'm not next of kin. What's going on? What's wrong? Would it? Apologize to Rose and make sure she gets home safely. Let's go. Sure. That play of yours, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I love you, Holly. Sweetie pie. What happened? He had a severe asthma attack, which triggered cardiac arrest. The doctor says the heart attack was mild, but... Well, the thing is, I can't get him to talk or anything. Well, of course not. He's been sedated. No, he's not. He's completely unresponsive. So, when did this happen? This morning. In Mr. O'Neill's office. He's the owner. <gasps> Mr. O'Neill. I'm Carl O'Neill. Are you also associated with Old and Wise? No, he's just old. Oh, little McFarlane. Hello. Oh, enjoy Hanukkah. Hello. Just love your show. Thank you. Bob Myrtle, it's Olive McFarlane. Hello. You someone important? Oh, no, he's nobody. Oh. Television makes you look older. Oh, you're done. Okay, now, show's over. This way, please. Off you go. Off you go. So, what can I do for you? Woody Laramie. We'd like to know what happened. Right here in your office. I see. Well, he, uh, he just collapsed. Asthma attack? Cardiac arrest, just like that? Oh, Mr. Laramie has always been a frail man. I'm sure that's not news to you. He looks terrible. I know. We're all rather concerned. The doctor's monitoring him. And frankly, I can't tell you much more. He came to talk to you about his money. He did? Because he was suddenly concerned about money. Well, they do get preoccupied with that subject from time to time. No cause for alarm. So, what's going on? Mr. Blachek? There's nothing going on. And I'm not at liberty to discuss Mr. Laramie's affairs with you. That's confidential. 
You're not next of kin. He's right, Joseph. Yeah. To say anything more would be unethical, wouldn't it? I knew you'd understand. Yes. I'll show you up. There you go. Well, you're not going anywhere, Olive, with Father, until he signs all the press. Sure, okay. Now, we'll do that in the sun room, though. Joy. Come along. Riddle? <clears throat> oh, Bob. Bob Summers. Bob? Bobby Summers, a boxer? Right, right, left, right? Whoa, Bobby Summers, all right. There you go. All right, kids, that's it. Well, arthritis is acting up. Okay, everybody, show's over now. Come on, let's go. That really pisses me off. Hi, how you doing? Elizabeth Crone, a big fan, but shy, though. Hello, Bob. Hello. <coughs> Not feeling too hot, huh? Oh, I was just a little tired. Heavens, I'm getting old. Oh, me too. <laughs> well, you're hanging in there, though, aren't you, Mrs. Croner? Yes, she is. Won't you join us for tea? Perhaps I could sing for you. Like Timmy Yodel? <laughs> yodel-a, yodel-a, yodel I think I better go. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye now. Nice of you to visit. Boy, am I glad I don't live in a place like that. Something stinks here, Joseph. Something smells real bad. Yeah, I think it was that yodeler. Where have I heard that voice before? Heidi, didn't she yodel? No. Elizabeth Croner. What's going on with this money? That's what I want to know. Uh, Why, well, Zach Gramps, does, uh, does he owe you some too? Take an advice from your grandfather. This sandwich, put it in your mouth. You've got to do something. What can we do? There must be a file on him in that place. How can we get our hands on it? Easy. Break into the joint. I'm so tired. It's all those card games. Maybe you're overdoing it, Mom. Mm -hmm. Good night. Mm -hmm. Sleep well. Get the light. Just hit me. Where I heard that voice. Which voice? Croner. I rose. You made it. Climb in. <laughs> Quick, get out of here. You escape. Good for you. Stevie, how are you? Fine. You a resident? Thinking about it. For my Aunt Rosie. How about you show me around, hmm? Well, it's a little late. <laughs> call me anything you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. Right, Stevie? <laughs> are you all right? You need help? So, where are we? Hmm? Well, this is the foyer. The foyer? Hmm. Down here? The cafeteria. But I heard the food's not that good. Interesting. Where's the casino? Listen, I gotta get back to my desk. What's that smell? Cabbage? Listen, you can't go in there. Lady, wait.
Where did you learn to do this? Don't ask. Portfolio. Long term bonds? <laughs> Big news. Ooh, bigger news. Blue chips. Stocks. Oh my God. Worth a tiny little sum. There's a ladies' room. You've got long lines or what? No, this is the administration section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the gym? Where do you get those muscles, big boy? Well, huh? I try my best. Try, try, and you shall succeed. You have to keep your voice down. So, where are the men, the walking time? I just don't get it. Why would Woody leave us? Whoa, uh, Whoa the plot thickens. Woody just happens to be the owner of a company. In the company? Yeah. Sunstone Services, Inc. Oh, we all have a little secret stuff. Incorporated eight years ago. Looks like their taxes are done on the computer. There. Would you let her know this? Oh, it's all out there, hon. Just waiting for us to grab it. Grab what? Knowledge. Makes you so damn up all the time. Life. What makes you so miserable? You think I'm miserable? Only 99% of the time. But I still love you. <laughs> Here we are. Yep, see Sunstone Services, Inc. All right. Here we go. Oh, my God. What now? Oh, son of a bitch. Oh, my God. Oh. Woody's company has over three million in it. Gross income. Woody. Corporation sales figures. A cheap line oh. bum. I'm saying he's broke. Just to make us feel sorry for him. Three million dollars. Play your wimp. Song wimp. Joseph? Joseph! No, no, no. Joseph! Where are you going? Lying bastard. Joseph, stop what did it. you tell us? You own a company worth three million bucks. You! Some allowance, you. Over there! Move! Set! Stay! Hi, Lamb Chop. How are you? Can you talk? It's me, Olive. What's wrong? What happened in Carl's office? Huh? You lied to us, hon. Hon? Say something. Talk to me. Woody. That's enough. Shh. Woody. Woody. Where's the money from? Hmm? You call me a miser? Keep your voice down. You call me a miser in front of my grandson? You are. What the hell is going on here? You. I want you guys out of here. Now. Go on, or I'm going to call the cops. Shame of yourselves. What? Just hang in there, buddy.
Look, Woody lied to us, plain and simple. Joseph, how can you be so sure? Three million, that's how. We haven't heard his side of the story. What's to hear? Don't condemn the man yet, Joseph. Innocent till proven guilty, remember? You watch too much television. You're gonna be all right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. This detective work has got all my juices going. There are some bushes you, you could... Uh... What I meant was... Well... Damn it, Rose. We should go on a date sometime. A date? You have a problem with that? No. It was exciting tonight, sneaking around. Like Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not getting anything pierced. <laughs> oh, no. Well, this date thing. How about it? Access program activated. Two letters matching. Password incorrect. Please try again. Password incorrect. Please try again. Five letters matching. Password incorrect. Please try again. Six letters matching. Password incorrect. Please try again. Frontier! Password correct. Log on successful. Sunstone Services, Inc. your wrinkled butt over here. What time is it? Now. Well, it's taken me a while, but thanks to little Susie, I broke into Sunshine Manor's computer files, and it's been most illuminating. <laughs> Who's little Susie? Fellow hacker. Lives in Cleveland. She designed this program. She can break into anything. 
get past any access code. Oh, lover. I will visit both of you in prison. Oh, what a pal. All right, fasten your seatbelt. It's gonna get bumpy. All right, these monthly statements, we're gonna start with something simple. Woody's finances, all phony. No way. Yeah, way. I asked Susie to run a check on his bank accounts, his stock holdings. Guess what? They don't exist. He's not even listed as a stockholder. So we checked. Isn't worth the paper it's printed on. Isn't it fraud? Oh, don't choke on your popcorn. Weirder still is the company that's registered under Woody's name. It has two directors. Woody and Mr. Snappy Fingers. Oh, that bastard. It gets weirder. The company has been dormant since it was set up. But then yesterday, $3 million flows into it. Come on, Olive. Who would put money into Woody's company, hmm? Several people. All residents of Sunshine Manor. But the biggest investor, Elizabeth Croner. Who is Elizabeth Croner? Jane Doe. <laughs> that voice, that cough, I remembered. She called the show and she hung up. What the hell is she doing putting her savings into Woody's company? I have no idea. <sighs> Attention all residents. Tonight's movie presentation is Grumpy Old Man. Oh, caught you. Come back to hear me. You're a lonely. Look, I hated the sound of music, okay? Excuse me. Good morning. How's Woody Laramie doing? I got him back in his own room. He's sitting up. So, anything else? Mrs. Croner's doctor was by earlier. And? She's not good. Is that so? Back to work. Morning. <coughs> Olive <Ooh>. Farland. <laughs> what? This is a problem. Oh, should have recognized that cough right away. Elizabeth, our secret. Did you sign power of attorney over to Carl? Well, we all make mistakes. I was a legal secretary. Married my boss. <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> oh, look at you. What'd you do for a living? Being Sam Croner's wife was a full-time job. The Sam Croner? <laughs> so you never had a, a job job? You never been in business for yourself? No. Nothing like that. No children? No. <laughs> Ever hear of... Oslo Industries, Inc. Oh, one of Sam's companies? No, I don't think so. Sam died 12 years ago. Yeah. This company was incorporated nine years ago. And Liz, it's yours. Yesterday, you bought half a million in stock in a company owned by Woody Laramie. Yeah. Bishop said to the actress. <laughs> oh, man, Woody. What did Carl do to you, man? Hey. What did he do to you? <sighs> From what you're telling me, this is a classic scam. This guy gets his residence 
to sign over power of attorney to him. That gives him control over their finances and allows him to invest however he wants. You got it. So now he's making big bucks with their money, and then he covers his tracks. By dishing out phony statements to them. You got it. So now he's invested all of their funds into Woody's company. Yeah, but three million? Why would anyone? I mean, he just had a heart attack. Well, if Woody dies, who's the executor? Who's the beneficiary? Who inherits the money? I got it. So you see, Scumface gets all the money. You call the police. You want to call the cops? Go ahead. I mean, when they ask how we got all this info, what are you going to say? We broke into the office? We've been doing a little illegal hacking, huh? Going to send little Susie to the slammer, huh? She's right. Whatever we got on him, they won't use it in court, right? It's inadmissible. So we are supposed to catch this jerk all by ourselves. Oh, ye of little faith. He may be smart, but we're no dummies. We'll, we'll track him. We'll follow his every move. We'll catch him with his pants down. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Your plan is to... Is brilliant. Rose is an actress, isn't she? Top form the other night, wasn't she? I was terrific. You're right. Rose, all you gotta do is go in there and gather intelligence. We provide the bait. The bait? Like about 100,000. Dollars? Where can you get that? Oh, <laughs> no way. Joseph, remortgage the house. Well, if you're nuts. Joseph, you'll get the money back. Minus a hundred dollar mortgage fee, of course. No, no, the answer is to no. No way. No. Fine. Come up with something. We still need you, Rose, to get the info. Some of us have a conscience. Rose, last night, I couldn't sleep. Probably gas. No, it was that kiss. Where's the celery? in jail one day. <coughs> I wouldn't be so... Joseph Blachachuk, please, be quiet. I'm sorry. Uh, while the pie's in the oven, maybe we could go upstairs. What for? To make love. If we wait much longer, I'll, I'll just lose my nerve. Now I've embarrassed myself. Oh, is... Is that... What? Say it.
I've been thinking about this ever since I first saw you. When I whacked you with my cane? <laughs> yes. Joseph Blahacek, you are twisted. <laughs> Blahacek, do you know what it means? Blau in Czech means bliss, and Blahacek, little bliss. Not so little. How much do you think it's worth? Must you give monetary value to everything? <laughs> I mean, my house. What do you think it's worth? <sighs> You're a good customer. Your house is worth a fair bit. I see no problem. But I'm too old. Go on, you're not that old. My health is not so good. Oh, I'll touch of the flu myself. I'm a bad credit risk. Now, who told you that? I've measly pension, no job. No expectation of income. So, understand. You remind me of my dad. Always got to look at every angle. Which is good, but... Mr. Blahacek, I'm approving the mortgage. It's a pleasure doing business with you. Oh. I had to fight her teeth and nails, but I got it. So proud of you. Present diagnosis? Brain tumor, inoperable. Oh, I see. How long does she? It doesn't look good. Uh -huh. And of course, blind. But not. Deaf? No. No, no, of course not, Mrs. Lair. Of course you're not deaf. What? The blindness is very recent. Tumors can do that. Just... You seem rather young to be a doctor. <laughs> I get that a lot. I'm just out of med school. I'm doing my first year of internship. Anyway, she used to be my father's patient. Well, ever since he passed away, of course, I feel responsible. Oh, oh, oh I see. I see, of course. And she has no next of kin, no one. Hmm, I see. And she can't quite uh, manage her affairs much longer, if at all. No, I understand. This is her financial portfolio. Yeah, me, I don't know much about finances. I mean, she's got all these investments, I'd say, about a hundred grand or so. Well, it's all Greek to me, but her needs taken care of. Of course. Well, that's not a problem. We can drop the necessary papers. Great. Of course, under the circumstances, I'll need power of attorney. Sure, sure. Hey, anything you need. I mean, what a relief. I tell you, I was having nightmares. You know, blood I can handle. You know, pus, excrement. I mean, that's a piece of cake. But money, please. Mrs. Lear, I'm Carl O'Neill, the director of Sunshine Manor. I just need to ask you a question. Do you have a will? <laughs> she seems very happy. Yes, yes, she's very happy. Very happy woman. Morning, Tom. Humming. Pass. X Is this one gonna die too? <laughs> uh, Eunice, this is Rose and Dr. Maxwell. Hi. I'll get it. What's she getting? Well, uh, she's really sweet. It's just that she gets these imaginary <laughs> phone calls all the time. I can what? Well, this is it. But that's the bed. Not exactly the Ritz, huh? <laughs> Uh, I know. I know. This buzzer is for assistance. Oh, yeah, I'll let you get set, man. So if you need anything, let me know. How dare you talk to me like that? 
<laughs> this encyclopedia, people. <laughs> we have to perform a medical procedure in the bathroom. I'm going to borrow your phone, uh, Eunice. Well, then, no, 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 no. I'm expecting another call. Oh, I'm just checking in for messages. I won't be but a minute here. But mine's important. <laughs> Ready? I'm ready. Breathe, Rose. Breathe. Hello? Mom, it's Grandma calling long distance. Hello, Mom? Carolyn, it's me. I've been so worried. What's that noise? Where are you, Mom? Niagara Falls. Hear the water? I'm here with Joseph. In a motel room with mirrors on the ceiling. What the hell are you doing there? You have to ask. Look, I'm very worried Don't about Don't worry. You. I packed condoms. Talk to you later. Rose. Woody. Woody. It's me, Rose. You're not alone. I'm here now down the hall. Can you believe it? I almost had a heart attack. Attention all residents. Cross-border shopping tomorrow. The bus departs at 9 a.m. No restrooms on board, so no food for breakfast. Good night. Like a moth to a flame. Never underestimate greed. Money talks. This guy listens. He's already set up a company in Roselier's name, Regan Developments. And look, her hundred grand, it's gone. Her hundred grand? It's my money. Maybe transferred it to another account. Timing couldn't be better, Elizabeth. Not only are you leaving this place, but so am I. Cayman Islands. Beautiful. No extradition treaties. I've instructed the staff not to use any heroic measures. At this crucial time, I think one's dignity is paramount. So, you didn't declare that the customs, eh? I think you're too old for prison. Eh? Hello? Ah, but not for pretty little ladies. <laughs> Hello there. Bob Summers is the name. Uh, Rosie Lear. <laughs> Joy Hanukkah. <laughs> Don't mind us. Cross border shopping and Casanova here has just committed a crime. Uh, oh. yeah. yeah, I smuggled in some aftershave and smoke, so arrest me. Uh, Rosie, are you a new recruit here? Yes, yes, I am. And this is a lovely place, wonderful location. Uh, so convenient for your family to visit. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, don't have any. I made my own way in the world with just a song in my heart. <laughs> Careful, she'll start yodeling. <laughs> Who do we leave it to? That's what I keep asking myself. <laughs> you can't take it with you. <laughs> uh, me, I'm leaving it all to this place. Oh, good, good. <laughs> then we'll get that new wing built after all. Uh, could you uh, take me around and introduce me? Oh, sure. Well, listen, Joy knows every damn thing about everyone in this joint. Oh, Bob's <laughs> exaggerating as usual. <laughs> Been miserable since birth. Broken home, box, bankrupt by 40.
but he's ours, tubes and all. <laughs> and he works, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> Now we're going into the music room, Rose. That's where we do line dancing. I'll introduce you. Hi, how are you? This is Rose. Hello. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Could shed a few pounds. Alcoholic. Smell of breath. <laughs> no family. Not too many friends either. Hi, how are you? Yeah. This is Rose. How's the family? He can't hear. Hasn't had a visitor in years. Bye-bye. Bye. It's a sad case, really. Diabetes, depression. Oh, man. Darling, man. But oh, oh, oh that's hey. okay. <laughs> right. You're doing fine, you're doing fine. Now we're going around the corner. Now, oh, this way, that's good, good. Now, here, this, oh, another one. Now, another one, now. Now, stop. Here, in this room, Violet Haynes makes a nice quilt. Do we care? Now, in this room, Woody Laramie. Occasional bladder problem, but rather sweet. Oh, oh the pickings are slim for gals our age. Should have grabbed him while the going was good, eh? <laughs> oh, thank God for Bob. Let's go. Careful. Careful. That's it. Here's your list. All right, including Woody. There are 12 people in that place with no next of kin. Who've signed over power of attorney, who bequeathed everything to Sunshine Manor, who got scumbag as executor. How convenient. When am I getting my money back? That's what I want to know. I'm going to ignore that question. Ooh, that rose. Damn good detective. These are the same people who invested in Woody's company. Look at that. Without realizing it, though. Yeah, well. The golden years. So what's next? Are we getting anywhere? Well, step one, we've set the bait and eat bit. Step two, we now know the extent of the abuse. Step three, Rose will give a stellar deathbed performance, whereupon Carl will funnel the loot through Rose's company, and ta-da! We've got him. See, so stop worrying. <laughs> will you two stop telling me to stop worrying? Hmm? So did you call Rose's doctor? Yes. Why do we need her doctor? <sighs> to proclaim her of sound mind and body. It's the only way we can nullify the power of attorney. And Jerry has a buddy who just happens to be a justice of the peace. So everything's going according to plan. Just call it Woody's company. Everything. What? What? The money, it, it's gone. What? What? The shares, sold. There's nothing left. What's he done with the loot? Why'd he move it? Where did he put it? Hundred thousand dollars, vanished, gone. Someone probably bit the dust Shh. overnight. That's it, that's it. Elizabeth Croner. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. There it is. $3,461,000. And there is my money in there, too. Let's go. We can't let Croner die yet. Rose has to die first. Come on. Three million it's party dollars. time. Keep her alive. She can't die. I'll explain later. She just can't die yet. All right? Okay, set her up. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. Excellent. Keep her alive. How? Yodel! Oh. You let me. Johnny. 
Neil, what a pleasant surprise. Ms. McFarland? Off visiting Mr. Laramie, are we? Oh, yes. Oh, he's doing so much better. And so is that dear Mrs. Croner. Remarkable. But James, what a constitution. Some people just never say die, do they? Excuse me? She's having a party back there. What a gal. I mean, she slays me. She absolutely slays me. Secure. Shakespeare? Richard III. The, the second. It sounds like she won't last the day. All of my roommates seem to die. I'm trying not to take it personally. Get my broker on the line, okay? And call my travel agent. Thank you. You're not listening to me. I want you to transfer all the shares into Regan Developments today. Now, 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 now. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? I'm, I'm brilliant. I'm a genius. Look, look, you old miser. He's transferred over three million into Rose's company. Oh, woo! <laughs> Is my money there too? Oh, shut up and call the police.
Caroline. This is Dr. Smith. Oh, hi, Dr. Smith. How are you? I'm oh, fine. Caroline, why didn't you tell me about your mother? My mother what? What? Oh. I need an ambulance to Sunshine Manor right away. All the world's a stage. All the men and women are merely players, age artists, entrance, and exit. That's definitely Shakespeare. As you like it. What are you people doing here? I see now. Oh. She's gone. Oh, thank God. I mean that it was so painless. Mother. Mother. Oh. I'll get it. Max. Move. Where are you going? Yeah. Call the police. I know what you are. You low life. He's gone. No, he's Rose? He he's gone. You were great. Yeah. Really? <gasps> Not bad, huh? <laughs> you have no shame. You're disgusting. Preying on these people. Oh, my dear people. Get. Don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? I happen to think you do, Carl. making a serious mistake are we why don't we open up your computer files and take a look hey, listen lady i don't have to explain a damn thing to you i run a legitimate business i have power of attorney not anymore what the hell are you justice of the peace raymond i have the papers here to revoke rose lear's power of attorney oh yeah well that's impossible because she's dead not quite I'm Dr. Smith, and I would like to confirm that Rose Lear is of sound mind and body and capable of making her own decisions. If you just sign here, Mrs. Lear. A sting, a caper, a taste of your own medicine, whatever, snappy fingers, we got you. Rose now controls Regan Developments. <laughs> the firm you opened up for her, remember? Over three million in shares, remember? The money you took from all those people over the years, remember? Remember? This is ridiculous! Excuse me, please. There's a problem here. Excuse me. Officer! Officer! This is my office and I want these people removed! I want her removed! She's insane! I want her removed! I want this little old piece of removed! And I want these people removed! I want her removed! I want all these people removed! This is my office! Just and I want this man removed! Right here. He's a fraud! I want him! I want him removed! There's your man. Theft, fraud, tax evasion. We have the paper trail right here. We tracked his every step. Millions right here. Where's the money? What do you mean, where's the money? What the hell do you mean, where is the money? this be happening? Maybe Carl Hill can tell us. Yes. Move real fast. Lady, 
Where'd we slip up? Lady, Stop. Where'd you go? 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 Where'd you Is the party in here now? This is the border, all right. And this is Woody's place. That's where he was born and raised. And the border really does run right through the house. Just like Woody said. Woody's all over the place. Well, I tossed some in that toilet back there. Woody in the toilet. Well, he ate an American and pissed in French. <laughs> and it is the Canadian side. Music. Dust to dust. Don't forget to put the seat down. Ashes to ashes. And then, how about? What about that stove over there? It's the American side, and that's it. Hmm? Yeah, but I don't have a passport. Get out of here. Okay, switch. Play the other one. $100,000. American. Real money. Woody. 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 Oh, the ashes. From Tom's fireplace. Tom the orderly. He was a big help. He had friends at the hospital that his father's an undertaker. So when there's a will and a few bucks to spread around, there's a way. See, the border runs right through here. So right now, you're in Canada and I'm in the US. You glad to see me? Don't worry. I'll make sure that everyone at the home get their money back and more. But even after that, after all this, there, there's still one million and a half left. 
Money, Joseph. Money. Lots of it. For all of us. Hey. Money, Joseph. Hundred thousand dollars all yours. Money is not what life is all about. What about that heart attack? Was that a lie too? No, no, it was real. And then I was in a state of shock. You've got to listen to me. Look, a few years oh, back, lies. I was keeping the books for the home for Carl's father. He was a good man. But then there was a shortfall. He was on the verge of losing everything. So I helped him out. I made a system, we sort of borrow people's money with uh, every intention of paying it back. But the old man died before we could do it. So when Carl took over, he wasn't paying nobody back. When he saw what we did, he started ripping people off. Woody, why'd you call the police? Because he said if he went down, so would I. I thought my hands were dirty. He made one mistake, though. He didn't change the password on the computer. Frontier, the one I came up with years ago. I was only trying to help. I was afraid he might outsmart you. You were afraid the cops will get you. That's why you are on that side of the fence, and we are on this side of the fence. I was stuck. What else could I do? Come with me and the, the, the money. Oh, running up to Miami like the fugitives. Woody, the money doesn't belong to you. I'm going to pay everyone who's still alive back. The rest is stolen from dead people. It's not right, Woody. No, no, no. Shame on you. Oh, Woody. Bravo. Ah. Joseph, wait. I just want to show everybody, especially you, Joseph, that I'm no wimp. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph. Here's your money. Here, take it, it's your money. I'll come back on two conditions. We buy and run Sunshine Manor properly with the rest of the cash, and from now on, I don't want no more of this whim stuff. You understand? Compris? Do you understand? Son of a gun. <laughs> 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 you, 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 